takes out one step back, but when you get punches going on the back of the head, and most importantly, you protect yourself at all times. Touch close, good luck, boys. Well, Irish has been around the block as Joshua gets ready for his eighth professional fight. Irish has gone the distance with world ranked heavyweights like Rodlania Service and Vyacheslav Glaskov. But he's also been banjoed in 44 seconds by Manuel Shah. And in his only appearance in the UK two and a half years ago, he lasted just 74 seconds against Ty Fields. That tells you, if you catch him early, he tends not to hang around. And Joshua has a habit of catching opponents early. Let's see what happens here. Joshua being physically imposing. But as we've seen in his previous fights, he doesn't just rush in, Jimmy. He measures his man. And then when he does land clean, the power is just far too much for him. Yeah, there's a few things he does naturally, which is definitely not being taught. He backs off and throws the left hook. You know, the body weight goes back and he gets power into the left hook. Throwing one just as I'm talking. Yeah, and, and as you see, he's controlled. He thinks what he's doing. He does not allow opponents to spoil and make it messy. He keeps them at arm's length. Look at this chair. Yeah, a chance comes. I mean, that's terrific. Spearing into average. Lacking the movement to get out of the way, and then just turning the corner with that cheeky little left hand as well. Measuring him up, ready to tee off. Ready to finish the block that, and then uh, really assault from the veteran. And that's the big question, of course, with Anthony Joshua. How's he going to take being hit hard on the chin? We don't know the answer. We will like that. And that's combination again. So quickly as well as he said, Jim. Yeah, I mean, he is tall and he stands tall for a heavyweight. Uh, so you, you wonder what well, that be a problem, but having said that, his foot movement's good, you know, he doesn't pull his head back from a tight. See that just a little half step back as I actually try to come forward. So they're certainly doing a good job with him in the gym. Yeah, the tough thing. For heavyweights, uh, is sparring. You know, when you're dealing with the lighter weights, you can move them up in the heavier guys, getting quality sparring. I think they've managed some of that uh, recently. Yeah, it's just with Joshua. <laughs> yeah, so as you can know, he's been out with Vladimir Klitschko. He doesn't get any better than that. And spearing powerful, straight left jabs. I mean, what we do it need to see is someone who can take him a few rounds. Will Irish be able to do that? I'm not so sure. That's probably shocking there. Irish. And just laying the punch, he's got another good body shot from Irish. But yeah, it's that, that's what does it. It's that one, two, that right cross that comes in. That hurts a punch. The way he stepped in with that, I mean, it just looked as though he was on the top spot there. He knew it wasn't missing. Stepped right in with it. Beautiful. Four in the second. 
is this number five here. And he certainly opened up as if he wants to get rid of him right here. Right, Rich. Ship in some punishment. It's interesting when Irish landed that right hand, you could grin to Joshua. I mean, Irish has never been known as a real big tower puncher in the heavyweight division anyway. But that must have so disproved Irish. Landed a decent shot, and it just produced a smile. And I think that Jarrod is also sickening on me. There's nothing he can do about that. Solid punches. That was perfect balance there for those punches. Couldn't get the follow up in there. He was out of range for that. Well, it's just a case of get the bomb site retrained, isn't it? They've got the digs to the mid section from Irish. These jabs, as you say, Jim, uh, uh, there is banker in this fight, so it's Mark Joshua. Yeah, the the ball, 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 Klitschko, Klitschko said he just learned so much how to be a champion, how to operate at the highest level. And he is a sponge. People, people who work with him say he really is a sponge. He just soaks it all up, all that knowledge, all that experience, takes it all on board. We've got to give Irish a little bit of credit. You know, he's, he's trying to get the chin down, the hands up, and hands up, and give it a bit of a go. But he's taking some hefty wipes along the way. Kept his chin out of harm's way. Joshua just doing pretty much as he pleases now. George Higgins tweeted that Paddy Power just lumped on a first goal scorer. Hope he's on fire today. Well, we hear you, George. And it's... What's this? Uh-oh. Is that your first goal scorer? Still out at 3 a.m. with his teammate's mum? This is why you need one of Paddy Power's super generous money back specials. This week it's money back as a free bet if Falcao scores at any time against QPR. That's money back if Falcao scores. Unbelievable offers for an unbelievable league. And at our Apple Pie, you shop and bet now. Well, Joshua, as usual, not in any hurry. What he's doing is working well. Keep doing it. Sooner or later, you'll catch him cleanly on the chin, and this one will be over. Taking nothing, getting good punches home, putting combinations together. Put on a show. Put on a show. So for the first time as a professional, Anthony Joshua, here's the bell for the start of round three. We don't usually bother looking at how long Joshua finally scheduled for, but if anyone is interested, this one is down to eight. Irish doing a nice job making Joshua miss, and the smile from the Watford man. Constantine Irish. Now, 
there's a difference in Irish, he's Bobby Langley's now, he's felt the full power, that was bang on the chin, he did well to take that up, he's still the end there, full credit to him. And he gets it off, and that's Hounds coming out, and he got absolutely slaughtered with a left hand right on the, uh, right on the decision of Steve Gray to jump in there, they've seen him up in the corner, that's it, I'll get the towering. Well, we complimented Alex the way he's giving that a go. It's back to take the fight to Joshua, but that big right hand, the first one that landed cleanly on the chin, and then caused the knockdown. You can see the difference in Irish when they get back up again. Can't blame him. He simply didn't want to be there. But the uh, throw was tried. He tried to keep performing. But uh, it just, that punch took everything away from him. So the, the corner were quite right. We knew what was on the way. And uh, just before the referee Steve Morgan asked, uh, the finishing punch he did land. But another terrific performance from Anthony Joshua. A lot of back credit to Irish for making him work for him. Well, it was a big right hand, as it so often is, that did all the damage. See the difference with that, that one landing cleanly on the chin, he was landing, you know, punches to the, the forehead, and that was the finish, and that, that, that was well after, I mean, Joshua could see he was on the way to the floor. So, I mean, at this stage it doesn't matter greatly, but uh, you have to really be careful of that. So down he goes, and well after he's on the floor, the big punch. And this is the finish now. Nowhere to go, matter of time, so thankfully he didn't have to take too many more. Job done. Eight out of eight for Anthony Joshua. As you say, no one's going no to argue with this stoppage. Irish have done what he could do. The corner had seen enough. Steve Gray had seen enough. We'd seen enough. Joshua had seen enough. There is going to be some talk about that one when he hit him when he hit him when he was on the floor as well. And as you say, Jim, you've got to be careful with that because that could be grounds for disqualification. Was it a bit of youthful enthusiasm? Was it a bit of spite? What do you think? He get carried away. You know, he's used to finishing opponents, but you really you have to pay attention to that. Uh, I mean, when you think, can you imagine maybe a couple of warnings before I have for long lows or whatever, and that's the thing that just uh, turns of disqualification against you. Just maybe too much enthusiasm, but his concentration was superb all the way through that, so he has to also concentrate with the fellas on the floor. Ladies and gentlemen, Timekeeper Gary Graham has recorded a time of 1 minute and 16 seconds of the third round. Referee Steve Gray has stopped this contest, but Irich in no position to continue, therefore your winner. And still undefeated, taking his round to 8, 8 and 8 inside the distance. It's AJ Alti Jotachua! The story continues to build and it'll carry on again next month when he's due out again. There was talk that Dennis backed off, the very capable man was going to come in. But uh, we're since hearing that Dennis is not going to be available for that one, so that one's up in the air at the moment. But hopefully the education will continue for Anthony Joshua. The interest in him will build because he really is generating some momentum. Eddie Hearn talks about him as a potential crossover star. Scott Quigg is due up next, defending his WBA Super Bantamweight title against Stefan Jamoy. That's our main event. It's coming up in a few minutes' time. Quigg in a pretty good main of form himself. And he'll want to emulate what uh, Carl Frampton, his great rival from Belfast, did last week. But before we get to Scott Quigg, we need to hear from the big fella, AJ. Anthony, congratulations, eight straight stoppage win, but taking the third round for the first time tonight. Yeah, um, just taking my time with things, no rush, picking shots, enjoying it. It's all about experience at this level, and we are stepping up, so like I said, getting the experience, so I'm not much point in rushing and doing the same old thing I was doing four or five fights ago, so just trying to do something different now. You seem to be varying the power of your punches in there. Yeah, most definitely. Um, I wanted yeah, to go eight rounds, to be honest with you, but uh, he's durable. Some shots that I hit him with, some opponents stuff, but no disrespect, but I'm sure they would have uh, gone out in a second, but he stood up, took some good shots, but it's only a matter of time in boxing if you keep getting four big shots, and that's what I was doing, is changing the angle, changing the power of my shots, and I caught him with a pinch of a punch, uh, and I got the stoppage. You did hit him while he was down, though, that's very unlike you. Did I? 
I didn't, I didn't think I had more this down. <laughs> did when you see the tape. You move upwards and upwards and upwards now. Tell us about the sparring with Vladimir Klitschko. How is that good for you in your learning process? Oh, the chap's in a league of his own. Um, it just shows that there's a lot of work to be put in. You know, um, I'm trying to progress at, at a good pace, but at the same time, I know there's a big gap to, to fill and there's a lot of hard work to be done but we're on top October the 11th now you know um, it's going to be a great show I'm back to London and it's just another stepping stone the chap he told me that he had some ups and downs in his career got them right and uh, that's, what's, that's what's got him where he is now it's, it's, it's not always going to be a smooth road right now things are going well and I hope they continue that way but um, like the experience for me got me in good shape for this fight for sure Dennis Backtop was the build opponent. Is that going ahead? Because there were some rumours he'd pulled out. Yeah, he's back on. He may change his mind after that. But and people got to understand if you if you do your analysis, which I'm sure your Sky team will, if you look at the progression of some of the great heavyweights over time, his progression is much, much faster against much stronger opposition. He's just doing it so easily. He could have done that in the first round. But it's about getting getting the rounds in. And on October the 11th of the 02 is his first title fight against Dennis Backtop. So it's a big night and a, a perfect progression fight for him. But he's just he's dispatching these people with ease every time we step him up so you could see him making bigger steps than anticipated over the next six to twelve months it looked like he was stuck between Shannon Colston and the devil got the better of him. Yeah. Yeah. He's that sort of animal. He can go in there and he, he, he's got such physically, he didn't allow himself to blast him on straight away because he wants, he needs that experience. And he actually allowed him to, uh, uh, to come forward and let his shots go just so he had something to come back to try and work on his defence and stuff. That's how good he is. I mean, as Eddie Hearn just said then, his progression is phenomenal. He's got He's so quick and he has to go back to it. He's got a chance to go back to it. Come on, pretty quickly. There's the analysis. Do you like what you saw? I love what I see. He's got a great jab. He's got those nice combinations over the jab. He's got those nice combinations over the jab.